Welcome back. Well, if you listen to the Biden administration and the corporate media, you would believe that the U.S. economy is creating record numbers of jobs every month, thanks to Joe Biden. Headlines like this one from the New York Times use the Labor Department's monthly jobs numbers to excitingly report that more jobs were created than expected by the so-called experts. But you might be surprised to hear that every month over the past year, the numbers have been revised downward weeks later after the initial report was lauded by the media. Yeah, so in all, uh, more than 439,000 jobs that were reportedly created in 2023, as reported by the Biden administration, were, quote, I don't know, overstated, meaning fake news. Uh, have we found yet another government entity that is flat out lying to us? I mean, come on. Let's ask our very own Melissa Armo. She is the founder of Stock Swoosh. Happy New Year. Good to see you. But Melissa, man, I mean, say it ain't so. Is our government? No. Lying to us about the job numbers? Well, Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. This is really interesting to unpack because sometimes it's not unusual to revise numbers. They try to get the numbers together every time they have a report come up, and sometimes things are revised. What is shocking is that this is happening so many months continuously, and not only that, there always seem to be revised down. So mm -hmm. I think that's what has become suspicious here, where it finally caught a lot of people's eyes. We're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, these numbers look great, but because the last several months have been revised down, are we expecting these new numbers that just came out last week to be revised down again on the next report? And I hate to say that that would be the case, but it does seem to be the way things are trending. You know, if you're a person that actively trades or invests in the market, you have to be really looking at lots and lots of things when you make investment decisions. You can't just look at these economic reports and say, everything's great, everything's fine. I'm going to go long or I'm going to buy the market here and we're going to make new highs. And we're going to keep going this year and the economy strong. I mean, first of all, the market doesn't always go uh, toe to toe with the economy. Second of all, we are starting out 2024. It's an election year. Mm -hmm. So I think the market isn't going to make any aggressive moves down this year or really any necessarily aggressive moves up the whole year. I think people should be suspicious about these numbers if they're looking to rely on them with 100 percent conviction because They've been revising them down, but you know, when they come out, when they give the reports, the administration mm -hmm. is reporting that everything's great, everything's fine. But you can't forget, you know, COVID, I know it seems like it was a long time ago, but actually it was three years ago. So many of these jobs are jobs that are still being added back where people are going back to work since COVID. And actually people have to go back to work now because all the stimulus is over. People need money. They've got to go back to work. And that's one of the reasons why the unemployment rate is still under 4%. And as long as that unemployment rate stays under 4% and inflation keeps mm -hmm. slowly coming down, it's coming down. The Fed wants to take a victory lap, but it's slowly coming down. Whoa, 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 said, Melissa, you know, did you just say inflation? <laughs> Janet Yellen said uh, we weren't having inflation. I think I heard that a number of times. And then she actually admitted that she made mistakes. And then they had this great idea that they're going to showcase and make the market look good by coining it by nomics. Just want to throw it out. It sounds like, I thought Bernie Madoff passed away, but it sounds like maybe he's the one working on these numbers. That's a joke, well, by actually, the way. I, I must have missed that, but there's so many things that come out in every, any given day you would know because you're working the news 24-7. But the, the problem is people are confusing prices with inflation. So, yes, inflation has slightly ticked down. And that's why the Fed didn't raise rates again in December. It doesn't mean they're not going to raise rates this year. They might. That's one of the reasons why I think we had a bear start to 2024. The market fell last week. Yes, it rallied today, but we fell last week. The problem is prices are still too high because remember, prices went up so dramatically after COVID and many people couldn't get products and goods and things. So yes, inflation has slightly ticked down, but the fact is prices are still too high. And personally, as a consumer, I don't think these prices are ever going to go back to the levels that we saw them prior to COVID. I think things are high and this is where they're going to stay. And yes, prices may not be doubling or tripling, but they're still high or higher than they were if we would have never had COVID. Yeah, Melissa, we were talking about the border earlier. 
And it's estimated that the average American taxpayer pays $1,100 a year to take care of illegal immigrants. You live in New York, where even your own mayor and governor are asking for more tax dollars to pay for the illegals that have been bused there. How could that further drive down our economy? I think we have a major problem here in New York City, and no one seems to be really handling the problem. But it's also a problem nationwide. And I think this really is going to hurt Biden if, in fact, Biden does run. And if, in fact, he is the nominee for the Democrats, I think this is a major, major problem. And it's interesting. Last week, the press secretary, the White House press secretary, actually tried to say that it was somehow the Republicans' fault uh, for, for, the, for the illegal immigration. It just didn't make any sense. I forget what day she had a press conference. She talked about it. It was either, I want to say it was Wednesday or Thursday. The fact is that we have no border. The borders are wide open. The Texas governor is busing illegal migrants to New York City. It has become overwhelming. And then Mayor Adams, who actually wanted to confront the Biden administration about this problem, uh, was given the boot. So I don't know really what's going to happen even for him to to run again uh, when his term is up, because there's talk of Andrew Cuomo possibly running against him. And again, people are angry at the governor of New York. People are angry at Mayor Adams. People are angry at the Biden administration here in New York and even lifelong Democrats that I've talked to are fed up about this situation. Even as much as people in New York City, it tends to be very, very far left, really don't like Donald Trump. I wouldn't put it past people to vote for Trump because they're so upset about this situation because they really see this as a problem and I, I hope it doesn't bankrupt the city. They can only raise taxes so high. So many people have already left the city. I think we lost about a million people since post COVID. So they can't wow. keep raising taxes. They're gonna drive more people out of the city and out of the state. Yeah, we know, because they're coming here to Florida, uh, where Tara and I are, and we're like, no, we're closed. Uh, well, we yeah. can't all move to Florida. We can't all move to red states. This is one country, right. and we need to, either we have a border or we don't have a border. So yeah. who's going to make that decision? Texas isn't making that decision. New York City isn't making that decision. Either we have a border or we don't have a border. And you know what the problem is in New York? There's a lot of people, and I, I talk to, I go in a cab. I just ask the cab driver, ask strangers. People are upset, everyone across yeah. the board, no matter your economic level. You know, there, everybody knows people that have been living illegally in New York and even yes. some of them working under the table. Now you have all these people coming in. They've been trying and to get- And it's costing them, going to the years. point that Tara just brought up, it's costing now. And when you're paying so much more as it is, and then you're paying $1,100 more, at least now, yeah, it's definitely weighing on them. Melissa right. Armo, good to see you again. Happy New Year. We're going to be right back. Happy New Year. Thank you.